<clears throat> we gotta do this again so this is our third take I ended up with my goal is to have a rather shortish uh, duration uh, video but in both cases I ended up with a 40 45 minute video we're not gonna do that we're gonna you know if we can't do this we're gonna break it up into two videos and I'll have to edit it and I hate editing so uh, we'll see how this goes um, so we're gonna talk about and we're gonna have to I'm not I don't have any of this scripted or written down usually I've been trying to do that but in this case you know I don't know maybe I'll have to do that maybe it'll take six takes we'll, we'll see but um, two things I want to talk about so I have let me clear these guns here or, or show clear so that gun is clear not a mag and there's no mag there and we're gonna take it off safe nothing there so this is my so so in the last couple of videos I talked about 1911s this is of course a 1911 the other three are Rock Island armories so I have a, a full-size and two commander Rock Island armories um, this one is another Philippine made gun uh, Philippines made gun um, it is a Metro Arms uh, this is 45 ACP this is my only 45 ACP uh, uh, 1911 uh, but it is of course it's commander sized um, it's lighter out so I don't know if this is all steel or alloy it doesn't seem to be as heavy as the uh, as the Rock Allen armories um, so I'll need to check but uh so this dust cover here appears to be rather thin so I don't know if they just kind of thin things out to make it lighter but I mean I'm not gonna lie it's heavy but it doesn't feel as heavy as the other my other 1911s and these are stock uh, these are OEM, uh, not OEM not stock these are aftermarket grips so these are VZ grips um, they come with like wooden uh, I guess fish scale like uh, uh, grips they look nice and they have a lot of detail but uh, they don't offer a lot of grip so I changed them um, so why are we talking about this so I've got my other 1911s it's somewhat dialed in I'm still working on a 10 millimeter and when I say dialed in I'm talking about putting lead to target so all this time I was you know I've been bitching in the last couple of years about how I've been struggling with the uh, I guess with basic marksmanship as it relates to 1911s and uh, I always thought it was me and I'm finding out now that it wasn't me it was the sights the whole time I was assuming that the sights were dialed in and how did I figure that out because three of those uh, two of those uh, so I was having issues with two of the Rock Island armories and then what was what was stumping me was that I was not having so much of an issue with the nine millimeter uh, 1911 um, it was pretty much attack driver still shooting low but uh, I'm actually able to have tight groups with that gun and so I took it to the range and kind of raised the sights a bit and it made things a lot better I still need to make an adjustment uh, but it changed things and then I did the same thing with the 22 TCM uh, commander um, that also uh, uh, improved greatly as far as putting uh, you know hitting what I wanted to hit that still needs a little bit of adjustment and now I'm working on the 10 millimeter but once I'm done I have to get this dialed in and uh, it, it, there's gonna be a problem and I might have to wait because I can't dial it in because look at the sights there there are they are non adjustable and I don't have the tools or the patience to be, you know, going to the range and then, you know, using a punch to kind of drift the sights to where they need to be. No, we're not going to go that route. I want adjustable sights. Um, I suppose I could. I mean, I could just get, because I, I do have punches, but I don't have brass punches. If I get brass punches then I would need 
a vice. I don't have a vice. I don't have any type of workbench or anything like that. So um, in order to get the proper tools to do that, I'm going to have to buy tools. I mean, and I could I could take the money that I would use to, to buy the tools to do it myself to just pay a gunsmith. So I'm on the fence. I don't know if I should just buy the tools and it doesn't it's not it won't even really require a workbench all I need is just like maybe a something that I could clamp a a uh, a vice to not necessarily a bench uh, um, so so there's that and then once that's done all I really need is our punches and I might need some files in case I need to uh, um, um, fine tune or, or get a, a site to fit in that uh in that Novak style uh area there um cut uh so I have work to do on this so I mean this is not essential this can wait um but this is it's coming down the pipeline uh once I get drift uh sites to be able to kind of drift left or right or elevate up or down it's gonna make this gun much more enjoyable I feel so um, I haven't been firing it much because it, it, it kinda ticks me off when I'm I'm aiming I'm doing my part as a human being and I'm still not able to hit where I need to hit so uh, so there's that so we're we're moving along it's we're at the six minute mark we're already on the second gun so why are we showing this I have plenty of videos on this gun this is my grand power p11 uh, so it's a subcompact carry gun uh, with a lot of uh, competition technology built into it. So the first thing most people say, especially Glock fans, is that, well, it's got a high bore axis. might have a high bore axis, but you'll never feel it uh, because this has a rotating barrel. And it, while it... It doesn't get rid of recoil it, it changes the recoil so it's no longer snappy popping up if you get anything from it you'll get something pushing back because that's the way the action works if you can see here it's 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 spinning the barrel yep so uh, why am I picking this up again this used to be my carry gun I have 14, roughly 1,400, 1,500 rounds out of this gun. Not much in people's, uh, in other people's circles, but for me, that's this is the most fired gun that that I that that I own. Uh, and there was a reason for that because I spent a lot of time uh, trying to hone my skills with this gun because uh, I think it was my my one. Might have been my second choice of carry gun. I, my initial gun that I started carrying with was the uh, Springfield Armory uh, XD Mod 2, XD9. Um, I still have that gun and I still use it. Uh, but currently I'm carrying the uh, XD45 uh, Mod 2 subcompact. But um, I went from that to this because this one is easier to shoot. Um, it's it's bigger than the other gun than than XD9, uh, and it feels bigger when you're carrying it. But uh, I never had an issue shooting this gun and hitting what I wanted to hit. Uh, plus, um, follow-on shots uh, because of the you know the technology, the rotating barrel uh, allows me to be quick. You know, uh, so I can get off quick follow-on shots and be somewhat accurate when I do it. Um, the sights are small. The, the dots are small on the sights. That allows you to be more accurate. You can act, you can almost pretty much uh, call your shot. Uh, and, and that's that's cool um, because you don't you no longer have to worry about the front dot covering and no, I'm not aiming at my face. Uh, the front dot covering a majority of the quite you know your target um, so the con is that in my older age it's becoming more difficult to see those dots um, it might be my 
my glasses, my optical uh, uh, prescription, because if I take the glasses off and just use range glasses, um, I don't have so much of an issue in seeing the sights. So um, I typically take the glasses off anyways. That's not saying that you know going from a gun that has big dots to, to this um, isn't going to cause me problems. It, it still does. Uh, the dots are just really small. The only gun that I have, the only other gun that I have to have uh, uh, small dots, and they're smaller than this one, is the Bursa Thunder Plus. Uh, that I definitely have an issue uh, getting a good sight picture. But uh, there's a drastic difference between that gun and this gun. This gun is stupid easy to, to shoot. So why am I uh, considering taking this gun back out? And I'm not planning on carrying this thing again, at least not yet, because it still has to go through a bunch of rounds. And the reason, I, the whole reason I I shot all those rounds out of the gun uh, is twofold. So one, to get used to the gun and and its nuances, become comfortable with the gun, and that requires actual range time. Uh, so you know, dry fire is not going to cut it. But I did do a lot of dry fire as well with this gun. Um, another thing is, uh, I had an issue that drove me to switch out this gun for another as my carry gun. Um, so several issues in fact, and I've documented all those, you know, issues in my video, in my videos of this gun. So, uh, the first issue I had is that as it got dirty, you know, if, if I'm kind of shooting it a lot at the range, and I'm talking, when, when I say a lot, maybe 200, 150, between 150 and 300 rounds, uh, a range session, this gun will typically, typically get dirty to the point to where, and it didn't start out that way, but, uh, as I, as I practice with the gun over time, I started shooting more and more, so, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the gun or the fact that I was just shooting more and putting more carbon in the gun. So uh, what it would do is the slide would start hanging up like this, a failure to return the battery. And in order for me to get it to return the battery, I would, each, I would have to bang it and it would go in the battery. But in the process of doing that, it would go from single action to double action. As well, uh, a lot of times when I'm shooting like this, because of the nature of, of you know perspective, I wouldn't even know that it wasn't in the battery because it you know from from my perspective from looking down the sight like that, whether it's in battery or not, it's difficult to tell. So that's out of battery, that's in battery, but I'm looking at the sight so I can't really tell if it's in battery or not until I try and pull the trigger and a lot of times when it's in bat out of battery and you pull to try to pull the trigger a lot of times it wouldn't do that and it would go so it fired that time but at the range when you do it it would drop back into DA mode and of course with this being a DASA gun I have uh, I guess uh, I can pull the trigger you know, and I could, you know, it's double strike capability. So you have a misfire, you can pull the trigger again, and nine times out of ten, unless there's something drastically wrong with that primer, uh, that round should go off. But the change is, is that I'm going from single action, action in a firefight or practice to double action. So uh, that it's kind of a pain in the ass. For one, it shouldn't, it, that's not the way it should work. And uh, I couldn't figure out why it was doing that but I suspect it was it's either because when you open it up and let's open it up here so we're at the 15, 14 minute mark so we're good we're on the last gun anyway so okay. it's gonna be a bitch to put that thing back together I had good luck yesterday in doing it so let's put that back there we're gonna talk about some of these pieces in a minute not just the barrel but we're going to talk about the recoil spring too. So you can see here, part of the, the barrel 
resides on that that little U surface there and it slides so as you're shooting it carbon gets on that and this gun thrives on being wet lubed so if you so I use uh, don't use grease I was doing that and it turned into a paste and it made things worse so the paste would kind of dry out and then you'd have like this like wet clay surface here that impeded uh I guess that 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 barrel kind of uh, sliding easily along that 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 you uh, space right there but um, I went from gun grease to um, what do you call it uh CLP and CLP is is the exact opposite of the gun grease and you know the gun grease is thick um, the CLP would not would never stay in place so I would put lube there because that's a that's a, a surface where it needs lube but in the process of shooting the gun or even laying it down overnight a lot of the the CLP would kind of you know I laid on the side and half of it would ooze out or if I put it this way it would go down this way so it, it follows gravity right uh, or or force you know a lot of times you're shooting the gun that shit just blasts all over the place um, it's no longer on the surface that you put it at it's everywhere else so uh, what I found was that I started using motor oil I have a shitload of Motul from when I owned my Subaru uh, WRX uh, STI um, I still have it in the garage it's thicker than it's a happy medium between that gun grease that I was using and the CLP and it stays in place so <clears throat> I started using that on the tail end of that 1400 rounds so I don't know if that's actually solving the issue now with carbon it still gets gummed up but uh, less so than the gun grease um, so what I'm planning on doing is taking this back to the range and shooting another maybe 500 rounds out of it to see how if this solves an issue another thing that I think was an issue is the spring so I got another spring I didn't order it I, I kind of complained and we'll, I don't want to talk about this now my issues now with uh, the importer but I had to I tried to purchase another spring and they don't have parts listed on the website for purchase so they sent me this free of charge because I was bitching and I wasn't really bitching about the cost you know I don't know what it I don't know what it costs I was bitching about the fact that I needed a replacement part and they don't have it listed on the website as other importers and gun makers do when you're trying to buy wear item parts replacement parts so look at these springs here this is the old one this is the new one so I know it's not a drastic difference, but it's enough of a difference for me to notice when I put the new spring in the gun, and I, I can tell uh, that the spring is stronger. Um, there's no longer an issue of me trying to put it, you know, it, you know, you saw me earlier kind of manipulating the slide to pretend that it was out of, you know, uh, out of battery. Um, with the old spring in there, with the shorter one, the one that's been compressed uh, it was much easier to do that and even in racking I can tell there's a difference in pressure so at first I thought is this a different spring but the coils are the coil number are the same uh, and another thing is is like I was thinking there's a drastic difference between these two springs as far as tension and as far as you know Look, look at the links there so I'm trying to do this it's not yeah so that's in 1500 rounds that's kind of drastic for 1500 rounds and in fact let me there you go but you know as drastic as it seems what a, another you know something that I wasn't accounting for was the dry fire that I was doing so when I dry fire, I'm racking the slide back to get it back in the SA or DA mode or whatever. And I'm, I'm pulling that trigger, right? Um, and so 
when you're doing that, you're cycling, you're cycling that uh, that spring. You're you're wearing down its its uh, life duration. Uh, so, I guess my advice is, if you're gonna take a DASA gun and it has this type of spring, um, and the spring is kind of kind of loose. I mean, I'm not saying you know do what I'm about to say to a 10 millimeter gun because 10 millimeter guns their springs are a lot stronger right uh, but this here if you're going to the dry fire I would suggest not racking the slide and over time wearing down that spring I would suggest pulling the hammer back and facilitating you know that the type of DA or the type of trigger pull you need to uh, I guess uh, exercise right so making sure I got the, the right so so we're gonna take this back to the range because we have a new spring and we're gonna experiment with this lube uh, and see if those combinations stand the test of time right but uh let's see if we can get this back together real quick on camera if not well, then we'll we'll wait because right now I think we're at we're at the 21 minute mark so we're 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 good so let's see there you go there you go shit there you go so yeah, even now I could feel a difference in racking the slide. So one other thing, since we have a little bit of a time here and we need to hurry up because I don't want to waste that time, um, is the last time I fired this gun, this wasn't in place. This is a whole uh, slip-on rubber grip. Uh, so without it, the grip is pretty tight, uh, slick and so the difference between this gun and its siblings is that the P1 and the K100 and the, the Q100 and the Q1S they they have uh, these modular grips where these panels you can replace to customize the fit of the grip as it relates to your your palm right that this is the only gun in the lineup that doesn't have that well maybe this in uh, P380 I'm thinking um, but that that's another con with the gun that the grips are very slick um, I practiced around it uh, but I never forgot it so uh, you know at one point I was cleaning the gun and I got tired of it and started thinking okay well uh, there's gotta be some there's gotta be a way to to kind of get a better grip and I don't like talon grips so a lot of people were referring talon grips to me and I'm like no I don't want a talon grips um, I, I've already I already have talon grips on one gun they're a pain in the ass to get right um, and uh, if you take them off they leave a shitload of residue that you gotta you know clean off and you know they're a mess so that wasn't an option for me so I kept looking to see if anyone experimented with whole grips for this particular gun. No one had. So I took a stab in the dark, ordered the smallest one, thinking that if it didn't fit, I could either sell this or return it and uh, get the next size up. This one fits. This is the smallest one. Um, so the best way to get it to fit on any gun, not just this one, is to use either a hair dryer, heat it up. Uh, or a uh, um, dang that distracted me. Um, or a damn it, a heat gun. So um, sorry about that. Um, to heat this up, but I didn't do that. I just kind of played with it, and you know, as I was trying to get it on, I I don't know if I kind of was manipulating it enough to where it started to uh, get a little bit of heat in it, or it just gradually expanded. I'm not sure. But it, it, it's, it's made a soft, uh, I'm not sure if, you know, the readership or the watchership or the viewership. Um, for those of you who ha have used whole rubber grips before, 
uh, you know what I'm talking about. For those who don't know, it's a very soft uh, texturized, so it's got some um, some texture there. It's got these finger grooves. All of that helps to kind of that's better than what it the gun didn't have, right? Uh, so the gun no longer moves in my hand. That 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 finger groove there helps greatly. Um, <clears throat> it's tactile. It's it's got um, I don't know. It's it's just it's got some grip. It's almost like it's uh it's it's not tacky. Um, but I've heard pe people complaining saying that over time it gets tacky. So be aware of what type of gun solutions you're putting on the gun because whereas the polymer might withstand it these grips might not so uh i would suggest uh uh watching what you put on these these whole rubber grips here uh but uh we're gonna test that out as well um it should make this gun all the more attack driver because it's not no longer moving in your hand in your hand so much now my my grip strength is not all that well um and i'm right-handed so my grip strength is mainly in my right hand my left hand is not as strong so I struggle sometimes holding guns that like to wiggle in, in hands like 10 millimeter uh, this is not a 10 millimeter I should be able to hold this gun well um, you know I guess uh, marksmanship fundamentals state that you need to have a majority of your your left hand strength holding the gun in place you don't want to have you know the majority of it in this hand because this is the trigger hand right so so you hold with this hand and you don't hold so much with this hand this hand is mainly there to kind of pull the trigger and and bolster this gun this hand <laughs> so uh with with this grip it's gonna it's gonna help a bit even though you know this isn't the grip hand the fact that it's offering that you know it's not it's not sliding in my hand so it's not going to be sliding up or you know being pushed back and moving left or right it's 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 fighting against the skin of my hand and it's kind of locking the gun in place so we're at the 27 minute mark we're good to go we are done see ya